Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to a, a quick tutorial. This is a very cool guitar that we are making here. It's a custom shop thing. We've got falling maple leaves and abalone and mother of pearl. But right at the end, right when Sam here, you're just lurking. Right when Sam here was supposed to be wiring it up, we realized that we didn't have quite enough room for the pots that we are now having to use. Uh, the long shaft ones that we thought we were going to use, not going not to cut it. This is something that has happened to me multitudinous times and happens to every builder. Every now and then, yes. But uh, there's a relatively easy solution. Okay, now this is a perfect, perfect use for, uh, for what I've got here. This is the new Triton multi-tool. And uh, yeah, essentially we've got a, a cordless multi-tool. I'm hoping it's charged. Blue LEDs. Everything is cool. Or made cooler with blue LEDs. Fight me in the comments. This comes with a, uh, with a flex shaft and this is what we need. Out you pop flex shaft. Now this comes with a bunch of tools and things but none of those are what we want. You have got a finished guitar here and uh, uh, you have left the top too thick. You can't fit your pots in, it's just not good. Or you've made it too well and the layer of finish has messed things up so that you can't fit your pot on. Your first thought is, okay, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a Forstner bit from Fanag. These things are absolutely incredible. I'm not being paid to say this. I am just a bit of a fanboy. They're amazing. And with a Forstner bit, you've got your center point and you, well, you can drill beautiful holes and oftentimes they're big enough for the pot, etc. But if you don't have something in the center, it's gonna wiggle around and cause all sorts, of, all sorts of mayhem and nonsense. You also can't really see what you're doing and run the risk of going right through the top or ripping a, a section of material uh, of guitar away. You don't wanna do that. The next thought is let's plug the, the hole that we've already drilled for our control put a mark in the center and then drill in in that way. With a flat top guitar, that's a valid option, but also just finicky and pointless because what I do is go in with a multi-tool, preferably on a flexible shaft so it's not quite so large, and, uh, and I use a, a little round carving burr. In this case, saber tooth, uh, they're what we have around, there are alternatives. These things, are incredible. There we go. So yeah, obviously I need to lock it in place and stuff, but, but yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. Hey, hey, hey. Well, that's the lock. Uh, I like this, I like this a lot. If Sam is watching this video, he's gonna be freaking out at me messing around with tools over this perfectly finished guitar. Look at that as a, Sophia, have you seen this? Where can I get one? <laughs> you can't. I've got a I've got a hundred year old version or versions of these sorts of things as well. That They're is cool. Awesome. Anyway, there you go. They're mine. That is really cool. I'll fight you. This goes on here. Get yourself covered in blue grease. That means it's good quality grease. And then lock that in with this incredible tool. And then that goes on there. This is a perfect, exam perfect example of the right, having the right tool for the job when you need it. Now, I, I believe that, that I deserve to own one of every single tool in existence, period. It's that sort of self-belief that, uh, that creates empires like what we're currently building here. But I haven't used... Do those guys not know they need to shut the poop up? Go and tell them to shut up. So Ben says, shut the poop up. I'm gonna make them stay late, see me after work. I have had... A, a version of this tool with this type of fitting for years and never needed it, but now I need it. So here we go. Perfection. At this point, it's simply just carving. So as I said, this video could have been two minutes long, but I like talking. This is actually not gonna be kicking up huge amounts of fine dust, but it does kick up chunks that when they go in your eye hurts. So. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this so I can talk to you. If I was doing this a lot, I would also be wearing a dust mask. I'm gonna put in the, uh, the old Isotunes, Crimson 10, get yourself 10% uh, off. 
and uh, entertain myself too. Okay, so before you do anything, remove uh, wires and pots, etc. You don't want dust getting in them. And uh, also be very aware that you're not going to be anywhere near wires. You do not want to hurt them. Now, one of the beautiful things about this is if your cavity is too small, you can actually also go in and carve away the edge so that your pots can go in. Just huge amounts of control. I take it back, it actually kicks out quite a lot of finer dust, so uh, this is going to be moving over to the uh, to the sanding room and dust masks, etc. But you can see just how perfect you can get with something as simple as a, a multi-tool and a little carving burr. I've got absolute control, I can see exactly what I'm doing and I can fit it to, to the guitar. And most importantly, or as importantly, when your customer opens up the back of their hopefully multi, multi thousand pound guitar that they've just commissioned from you, it looks like everything went as planned. It looks attractive. Uh, it's nice and smooth. It's not a jagged, nasty, nasty, crunchy mess from where you've had to go in with a force nibbit. I've had to do that in the past. I did not have this solution. I hope this has helped. Please click like, subscribe, uh, share this video to all your friends. Check out crimsonguitars.com, Dorsey Guitar Museum, Daily Guitar Draw, all that jazz. But uh, yeah, go make sawdust. See you soon. Have a good day. Goodbye. Crimson Custom Guitars. Why? Because we're awesome.